Welcome. So we have here a disk that is spinning, and this is somewhat new for us in that we have objects with dimension now. In order to make our lives easier, we are going to say that these objects have to have rigid bodies. They can't change shape. So that this has to have the same shape as it's going through all of this stuff. It's a very good model. It's a model that applies to a lot of solids. What this means is that if I have a piece here, and if I have a different piece here, as this rotates around, it's going to go in this circular fashion. This one is going to go around in a different, slightly larger circular fashion. And as they both rotate, they have to have the same angular acceleration and the same angular velocity. But we want to understand more about this so we can start using these pieces. And if we understand all of the pieces, we might be able to understand all of these. So we're going to say that each piece is a point particle. And if we add up enough of these point particles, then we're going to get our disk. So this point particle is going to have some velocity of this piece. This point particle is going to have some velocity of this piece. And each of our objects is going to have some distance from the center. So if we're looking at the kinetic energy of the disk, then the kinetic energy of the entire disk would be equal to the sum of the kinetic energy of each piece for if we sum over all pieces. So if we sum over all of these pieces, we would get right, the sum of the kinetic energy of each of these. So 1 half the mass of each piece. right? Each piece might have different masses. And then the velocity squared of each piece. So we can do one trick first that if we have this sum, the 1 half, whether it's inside the sum or outside the sum, we can pull it out. So I have 1 half the sum of eb sub i v sub i squared. But what I can do is I know that the parts must have the same omega. So I can use my old relationship. that I know that the velocity tangential is equal to r times omega. So in this case, then, I would say that my vi is equal to ri times omega. And what's nice is then that my omega is going to be the same for this piece and this piece and any other piece in my disk. So my kinetic energy of my disk. We still have this 1 half out. And now I can do the sum of m sub i, r sub i squared, omega squared. Now, just as I pulled the half out because it was constant in this sum, this omega squared is also constant. So in order to represent that we pulled it out, we can take this and bring it out and in that way. Now let's compare right, the translational kinetic energy. 1 half m v squared. So this is 1 half 1 half. This is the translational mass. This is the translational velocity. Well, looking up here, this is the angular velocity. So for my translational kinetic energy, I have 1 half times the translational mass times the translational velocity squared. Here I have 1 half times something times the angular velocity squared. And this is right, my kinetic energy for things rotating. So we're going to call this whole concept the sum of m sub i r sub i squared. This is the angular equivalent of mass. But nobody actually calls it that. The problem is, is that 
the engineers got to this term first. So instead of mass, they're going to use inertia. And instead of angular equivalent or talking about any of that, when they talk about torque in engineering, they call it a moment. So this is going to be called moment of inertia in every textbook, every video that you ever watch. And so we are going to use capital I for inertia. Moment of inertia is going to be the sum of M sub I, R sub I squared. How do we calculate this? We would have to actually take a real sum or a real integral. But luckily for us, they've been done a number of times. So the moment of inertia for a disk is 1 half the mass of the disk times the radius of the disk squared. The i for a rim or rimmed wheel is just 1 times the mass of the wheel, the radius of the wheel squared for, say, a hollow sphere, 2 thirds the mass of the sphere, radius of the sphere squared, and so on and so forth. So just look up moment of inertia of whichever object you are, or moment of inertia common shapes and you'll get right the full table of these. We don't want to spend all time doing this. But this is how we get the kinetic energy of a rotating object is then 1 half. Instead of writing all this, I can just write i, and then I can write omega squared. So this is 1 half the angular equivalent of mass, the angular velocity squared, very similar to how it works for translation.